I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles or your Bible apps and turn to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5, it's our text for our entire series, not just this morning or this evening, but for our entire series. And, and so uh, if you don't have a Bible with you or a Bible app on your device, I'm going to encourage you to grab one of the Bibles out of the seats around you. And turn to page 1,158, and you will find our text for today. And as always, if you don't have a Bible and you want one, then please take one of those with you. Uh, we want you to have the Word of God, read the Word of God, because we know if you do that, God will change your life. Uh, now, I have to just recognize for a moment that some of you are a little bit awkward because I'm not really here and I'm preaching. And uh, that may seem a little bit strange since uh, this is a, a video that I recorded earlier this week. And, and, uh, and so just let me explain for a moment. First of all, it just happened this way because of, you know, poor scheduling on our parts. You know, Chet and I both committed to uh, weddings months ago and didn't really check our calendars. And, and then we had serve our schools today and, uh, you know, family life you know, situations that just kind of uh, made this possible or made this necessary. And so we're, or I'm actually sharing with you through video because uh, that's kind of what our team decided would be the best way to communicate today. And, and, and also, this is kind of, a, a, you know, giving you a sneak peek of the future because uh, it's not going to be that far in the future when we start opening other campuses, either uh, in Lake Havasu or in other cities, where we're going to be doing video venues uh, on a regular basis. And so this is kind of like tasting the future a little bit. So I hope that doesn't throw you off too much. I recognize it's strange. Uh, it's different. It's a change. But then change is one of our core values here at Calvary. We believe that you can't follow Jesus and stay where you are. So this is change. I uh, hope, uh, hope you can still listen to God and hear from him uh, this evening. So we're continuing Character 101. The, the traits that God the Holy Spirit is trying to teach us whether we want to learn them or not. So uh, have you ever taken a course, whether it's in college or high school, that you just thought, this is completely useless? I mean, what is the point of this? Why am I taking this? Why did they put this in the required curriculum? I don't want to take this. I'm never going to need this. I, I had one of those, at least one of those. Uh, and uh, it was in college. It was Business 101, uh, and they made it, even though I was a religion major, I was studying the Bible and, you know, learning how to be a preacher. Uh, I didn't want to take the class, but they said, to graduate, you got to take the class. So I took the class, and, uh, but I didn't learn anything because I didn't care. I, I didn't try. Uh, I was going into ministry. I was going to change lives. I was going to preach God's word. I was going to, you know, lead people to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. Uh, I was going to build a church. This was all about ministry. I didn't need to know business. I was an idiot, okay? I just want to tell you that. About a decade later, uh, after that class, I became pastor of Calvary, and I realized I need to know some of this business stuff. If I was going to lead a healthy church, I need to understand some of those concepts, and so then I started actually like trying to learn them on my own. Today, we're talking about goodness, it's one of the fruit of the Spirit. If you'll look at Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, if you need to look at it, look at it. it. By now, many of you should be able to quote this. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things as these, there is no law. And, and, and so we're talking about goodness. About goodness. And, and Really, honestly, when you talk about the fruit of the Spirit, people get a lot of the early ones right, a lot of the late ones right. Goodness, a lot of times, just one of the afterthoughts. It's not really that people don't like it. They just don't really think about it. And a lot of times, uh, at least when I was growing up, they just kind of lump kindness and goodness together like it's the same thing and just trying to treat it like the same thing. Uh, and so a lot of times we can uh, not understand its importance for our lives. But we need to learn goodness. Because God is actively teaching us goodness. If you're a follower of Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins and was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then the Holy Spirit in you is trying to teach you the lesson on goodness. Uh, 
and it matters. So let's talk about goodness. First of all, we got to talk about what is goodness. What is goodness? Because this is where I think a lot of churches um, go off the rails, at least the ones that I kind of grew up in. Because uh, I was kind of taught goodness is just being good. Goodness is just being good. It's, it's all about the stuff that you don't do. You know, because good Christians don't dance, drink, cuss, or chew, or run with girls that do. You know? And, and all of us, if you grew up in church, then, then you had that list of things you weren't supposed to do. Right? So what were some of those things that you were told you, you couldn't do if you were going to be a good Christian? Uh, you know, was it... Uh, uh, how many of you, you know, weren't allowed to go to movies because that wasn't, uh, you know, a good Christian thing? Or how about playing cards? Playing cards? Anybody? Okay, some of you play cards. I was told you we couldn't play, like, you know, poker because it was evil, and we weren't supposed to use face cards. That's, by the way, that's why rook cards exist, because, you know, Baptists still wanted to play cards. Uh, and they play all the same games just without, you know, face cards. And, and, and there's all these kinds of things, whether it's TV or whether it's what you eat or where you go, uh, you can't do this stuff. And so I was taught that goodness was both passive and negative. Think about it. Goodness was passive and it was negative. It was about what you didn't do, what you can't do. And so good Christians were people who didn't do the wrong stuff. Uh, by the way, in case you're wondering, I was taught wrong. I, at least part of it's wrong. I mean, understand, goodness is significant for every single follower of Christ, and it's related to kindness, but it's very very different. See, kindness is about our attitude towards others, how we treat others, how we see them, think about them, and relate to them. But goodness is about action. It's about what we do. What we do. The Apostle James in chapter 2 said, faith by itself without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. And so goodness is acting for the kingdom of God. Goodness is doing Christ's work as his hands and as his feet. It's being his representative in this world. Uh, so at this point, let me just express my gratitude to the army of volunteers who today went out and lived out the goodness of Christ through Serve Our Schools. Because I know there were many of you that gave your time, your talents, your energy, maybe even your resources to help represent Jesus while helping others. And that is a beautiful picture of goodness. So let me just tell you, great job, Calvary. Way to go. You've already heard the, the uh, details and the numbers and all that kind of stuff. So I just want to praise God for you and for what you have done in his name. So understand, we were not rescued by Jesus to only abstain from the bad. Actually, we were created to do good works. Created to do good works. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. By the way, if you want to, you can turn in your Bibles one page over to Ephesians 2, 10, and it says this. For we are his workmanship, God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. God created you. By the way, that's why every single life is important. Every single life is significant because God created you. And then God created you with a purpose, a to-do list of accomplishments, of achievements that he has designed for you to further his kingdom. Think about that. To do good works which God prepared, which God anointed, which God said, this is what I want you to do. So you were created to complete tasks for you, for the kingdom of God. I think that is so cool. That God has specific jobs for you. Not for me, not for somebody else, but he has specific tasks for you. And, and that being good means that you embrace that and that, that the fact that you're created in his image and you're created with a purpose and you do that. By the way, this is one of those things that when I wrote this sermon, uh, the, the tragedy in Vegas hadn't happened, but I think this, this kind of is a great illustration that in the midst of the, the most horrible mass shooting tragedy in American history to this point, we also had evidence of the goodness of God's people and the goodness of people uh, 
juxtaposed against that. Because on Sunday night, uh, a, a man exercised brutality and hatred and envy and, and murder. And then on Monday, I saw posts from people, some of them Calvary members who were in Vegas who were donating blood. And, and then there were hundreds and then thousands of people waiting in line to donate blood to help the victims and to replenish the blood banks and, and to do all that. And, and I just thought about that and I went, wow, you have all these people who want to do something good. Now, if you're into the whole evolutionary creation uh, kind of thing, and you're just like, uh, uh, I'm not sure there's a God, and I'm not sure that he really created specifically, and all this kind of stuff, and you just kind of think that we're a cosmic accident, then um, the, the evolutionary understanding of what we do is survival of the fittest, that we act for our self-preservation, that that's the driving force of our species if you're, you don't believe there's a God involved, that we're just always trying to do what's going to benefit us. And, and I think about that, and I go, but look at all these people. First of all, the stories of people who are protecting others, who are helping others in the midst of danger, and, and they were trying to preserve life at the risk of their own. They acted self-sacrificially. And then you had... All these people, strangers, who just said, I want to do something to help. I want to give a part of myself, a pint of my blood, to try to bless other people. And I go, you know what? They may not even know God. They may not even understand that God created them. They may not understand that Jesus loves them and died for them. But there is something inside of us that drives us to try and do good, to help others. Because you know what? Giving blood, there's no self-preservation in that. Risking your life to try to help other people in the midst of gunfire, there's no self-preservation in that. What, what is the motive inside of us? And sometimes people go, I don't know, it's just the right thing to do. Why in the world is that the right thing to do? Because every single one of us was created in the image of God to do good works. We, we were created for that. And, and, and so understand, God has a task for you. He has tasks for you. He has a mission for you, and, and he's created it for you. It, your job is not my job. My job is not your job. It, it, every one of us has an impact that we can make on the lives of others if we'll embrace the task, the mission of Christ that he has for us. So goodness is us doing and serving in Jesus' name so that God can change lives through us through you, through, through the way that you influence, the way that you touch. So I hope you're beginning to grasp your significance in God's kingdom. I hope you're beginning to grasp the good works that God has for you. And, and if you don't understand, you know, what you need to do or how you need to do it, let, let me just encourage you to take uh, our equip class because we want to help you. We want to help you understand this. And so we offer classes. Uh, you know, if you don't know anything about Calvary and you're interested in knowing more, we offer an intro class every month. Uh, and then uh, we offer this class called Equip, which is talking about how you can be the person that God created you to be. The next uh, Equip class is uh, November the 4th. So you might want to circle that on your calendar and check it out. Information should be in your bulletin. And then we offer an ethos class, which we are going to actually offer November the 5th. And, and it's uh, about how to be a leader here at Calvary. You want to understand the why we do things we do. And, and so we want to help you discover your God-given tasks so that you can use your gifts and as the person that God created you to be, fulfill the purpose that God has for you. You see, we were all created to do good works, and goodness is a powerful demonstration of life change. Goodness is a powerful demonstration of life change. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus says this, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Jesus said that if, if people see Christ in us, in our actions, in our works, in our deeds, then they're going to eventually come to that place where they embrace Jesus as Savior and glorify God. Which is why serving our community is so important to us at Calvary. 
it, it, it's, it, I, I can't overstate how significant it is to us, and, and I hope that you understand this, uh, because here's what happens. When people who don't know God see us serving God with, with joy and with humility, they may become intrigued. Why are you doing this? We could ask that a lot. Why are you doing this? What's the point? What's the purpose? Uh, and once they become intrigued, they may be willing to have a conversation about Jesus or even attend one of our worship services where they're going to hear the truth about Jesus, they're going to hear stories of life change, and hopefully they're going to embrace Jesus and experience that life-changing relationship with the Son of God that fuels us and has changed us, and therefore they're going to praise God. They're going to glorify God. That's the way that it, it works. That's the way we want to see it happen. That's what we want to see happen when we do the service projects, when we dive into uh, all the things that we do. That's why Serve Our Schools was such a big deal. That's why we're, uh, next month we're sponsoring the Compassion Experience. And, and I hope you'll check it out and, and see what God would have you to do with that. It's why we collect candy and serve on Main Street for Halloween. By the way, did you notice that we're starting our candy collection today? So uh, if you've got candy, we want it. Okay? Yeah, just saying. And, and, if, and if you don't have candy, uh, go get some because we still want it. Because we give away tons of candy, literally tons of candy to the kids of Lake Havasu. Uh, and we do that because we want to serve our community. It's why we give out gift cards. A and we want to help people. It's why we sponsor car shows and, and, and have a benevolence ministry where people can come in and say, hey, I, I need help. Because goodness is a powerful example of how Jesus can change lives. Uh, and it's why every single one of you is important to the task. Because we can't do this only with church staff. We can't do this only with a few leaders. It's not just the pastors and the deacons or the life group leaders that God's calling to serve him. That God's calling to embrace this, this goodness so that we can demonstrate the life-changing power of Jesus and, and see people glorify God. We need everyone. We need all of us serving together, representing Jesus through our good works. So, you encounter people that I'm never going to meet, not unless you drag them here. And even then, it's still a big crowd. You encounter these people, and they know you on some level. They might even trust you on some level, and you have relationship. And if Jesus Christ has changed your life, then that means that he's put them in your path for you to influence them for God's kingdom. And if your life is demonstrating the power of God in the works that you're doing, if your life is representing Christ in a powerful way, you're going to have a powerful impact on those people. I believe those are part of the tasks that God has for you to build his kingdom. So these people know you. They trust you. They watch you. They see you. What are they seeing? Are they seeing passive goodness? Because that's how I was raised. Wow, you know, we're just not going to do the bad stuff, and then people are going to be impressed with our goodness and want to follow Jesus. Only it didn't happen. Are they seeing active goodness? Are they seeing you loving people and serving people and representing Jesus in a positive way, having an impact on their lives by the things you do? Or are they seeing neither? You see, goodness is a powerful demonstration of life change. And then goodness is a natural result of grace. Goodness results from grace. It's, it's one of those things that occurs in our lives. It's kind of an outpouring uh, of grace in us, and it results in goodness. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. We already looked at verse 10, so I'm going to back you up a little bit. Look at verses 8 and 9. The Apostle Paul says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. Our salvation is through Jesus Christ. It's through Jesus and his death on the cross for our sins, his resurrection from the dead. Our salvation is not 
because of our good works. Please hear this. This is so important to understand. Motives matter. Why we do good works matters. Listen, if you're doing good deeds, if you're trying to embrace goodness so that God will love you, so that God will show you favor, so that you hope that you will get to heaven, then you're doing it for the wrong reasons. There is no way in this world that any of us can be good enough, do enough good, sacrifice enough, give enough to qualify for heaven. Because all of us are sinners and fall short of the glory of God. Uh, Romans chapter 6 says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Understand, if we get what we deserve, then we get hell. None of us can be good enough. But if we, if we receive the gift of grace that Jesus offers us, we get heaven. And some of you are going, so I don't have to do anything to be saved. You just confess Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Scripture says if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. It's a gift. God provides salvation as a free gift for us. So then some of you are going, then why do we engage in good works? Why do we even do this uh, if we don't have to do anything? The biblical answer is gratitude. Gratitude. We are thankful for the gift of God, so we embrace the tasks that God has designed for us, and we do them with joy and with humility and with thanksgiving because we're getting better than we deserve. And God has invited us as his children, as his servants, to represent him to the world, which is an incredible honor. Look, it's, it's not a burden to represent Jesus. It's a privilege to represent Jesus. And when we understand that, then, then we are thankful for God's gift and we want to do the tasks that he has for us. We want to embrace goodness. We want to be active in the kingdom of God. So let me just be really blunt about my concern. See, Calvary serves. We're, as a church, we're going to serve. We're going to keep serving. It's what we do. It's how we're going to penetrate our community with the 40,000 or so people that don't go to church any place. We want to rub shoulders with them. We want to walk side by side with them. We want to we encounter them in the public and represent Jesus uh, in some way because we're hoping that they will hear the message of the gospel. But here's my concern, that we're going to, while, while we're in the midst of doing these good works, that some of you may go, hey, you know what, I really like the good stuff they do, and I want to be a good person, and I want to go to church, and I want to hang out with them, and I'm hoping that I make it to heaven. And, and one of my concerns is that there are some of you in this crowd who are thinking that somehow you're going to be good enough and God's going to receive you, and it's not going to work. The only way you're going to enter into eternal life is through embracing Jesus as Lord and surrendering your life to him and experiencing that life-changing grace that God wants to pour into your life. That all of your sins are forgiven, not because you're good, but because even though you're bad, Jesus loves you. And even though I'm a scum-sucking pig sinner, Jesus forgives me when I ask him to. So God wants to make you new. He wants to give you a fresh start. He wants to fill your life with joy and with purpose. And then he wants you to serve him out of gratitude. Not out of obligation, but out of gratitude. And then when we engage people in good works, we're going to lead people to Jesus. And we see God's power demonstrated in our lives, and we grow in goodness. See, it never works the other way around. If you're trying to be good enough to make it into heaven, you never grow in goodness. You just grow in frustration because you never feel good enough because we can't be good enough. That's why grace is so amazing and so wonderful. So are you doing the good works that God has prepared for you? Is your life shining in a way that people can see your good deeds and glorify Jesus? Are you serving out of gratitude? Are you passing the course on goodness? Or are you just showing up because you think you have to? The Holy Spirit in you is committed to teaching you goodness. I pray that you can live out as the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you 
for you are good to us. You demonstrated that goodness in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. You live out that goodness in our lives day by day by redeeming us from the brokenness and pain and sorrow and hurt that we experience. Ultimately, we get to experience that goodness in the promise of heaven. Not because we're good, but because you are and you paid the price for us in Jesus. For that, we thank you. But God, we also want to live out as your servants. We want to embrace goodness. We don't just want to be passive, negative Christians. We want to be people who, who live out the power of God in the good deeds that you have prepared in advance for us to do. So we welcome your conviction. We ask that you would energize us and change us so that we might live actively as the children of God. But we can't do that without your help. So we commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen. In just a few moments, we're going to uh, continue worshiping God by celebrating communion. And if you're here with us today and you're a follower of Jesus Christ, then we invite you to join with us in remembering his death and resurrection. Uh, our deacons are going to be passing out the elements, and as the tray comes down your row, we invite you to take uh, two cups. One is stacked in the other one. And one has the bread, which represents the body of Christ, and one has the juice, which represents the blood of Christ. And I want to encourage you, after you take that, to have a conversation with God. And when you're ready to say, Jesus, thank you for the gift of grace. I don't deserve it. And Jesus, I want to live out your goodness in my life so that others can see you. Then eat the bread, which Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Drink the cup, which Jesus said, this is my blood, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins, and worship your Savior. Let's worship together.